Gute Tag und Willkommen zu PA Dutch 101. This is video 7 in our series and it will deal with the grammar topic of verbs and the conjugation of verbs, which in Petsby Dutch we really don't have words for those, so I use the English again, verbs or conjugation. So we'll talk about that today. Again, this is a grammar-based video. If you haven't seen videos 1 through 6, I highly recommend you going back and checking those out first because we'll be talking a lot about material covered in the previous videos to, in order to understand the topics in video 7. So let's get going. Verbs and conjugation. As you learned at some point in school, uh, a verb is an action word like to jump, to sing, or to play. Okay. In Pennsylvania Dutch, verbs are action words too. So one thing that you might not have been actually taught because you just learn how to do this as you're learning your language, whether it was English or whatever your first language was, this is that in English and in other languages, verbs conjugate. Conjugate means they change, and, and that's the big topic today in learning how to be able to do that. Um, the thing is that everybody, no matter what language you speak, you've been conjugating verbs your whole life, and for most of us, we don't even realize we're doing it, and we, we just do it. Okay? Our goal is eventually to get you to do that in Pennsylvania Dutch without even thinking about it, too. But we've got to learn how to do it first before we ever get to that stage. Okay? So, just to give you an example of what I mean by conjugation, let's take the verb to play and conjugate it for the various forms in English. Now, when we conjugate a verb, we are really basing the verb off of whatever the subject of our sentence is. So, a noun. And I would highly recommend, if you didn't see the video on personal pronouns, that you go back and watch that first before going any farther in this video. Because learning and knowing the personal pronouns are vital and key to being able to conjugate verbs properly. So, uh, but let's take the verb to play in English and conjugate it for the various personal pronouns that we learned before. I play. You play. He or she plays. We play. You guys play. They play. Pretty simple. In English, verbs don't change much when they conjugate in the present tense. Really, the only place a verb usually changes in English is in the he or she. Third person singular gets an S. And that's the, that's the general case. Sometimes that isn't true, but most times it is in English. Okay? So if you notice, when a verb conjugates in English, it's pretty easy. It doesn't change much. Uh, that's not the case in Pennsylvania Dutch, and that's what we're going to talk about here in a couple of seconds. So, unlike English, Pennsylvania Dutch, a verb changes quite a bit. It's not just add an S, sadly. I wish it was that easy, but it's not. What you're going to find is that all verbs in Pennsylvania Dutch, no matter what verb you're dealing with, will always end in an E. If you bought one of those fancy dictionaries, one of those dictionaries that I advertised in the first video, you look up a verb, pick any verb to sing, let's say, and you look up in that dictionary and you find the word to sing in English, to sing in English. In Dutch, it'll be singe. That, what you see in the dictionary, singe, S-I-N-G-E, is what we call the infinitive. That's the pure form of the verb, what you'll find in a dictionary. All of those infinitives are going to end in an E. Here's another example. The verb to say in Pennsylvania Dutch, saw, ends in an E in the infinitive. Okay? So that's the ground. we have got to remember that. All verbs end in E in Pennsylvania Dutch. Now, when we want to conjugate, there are two rules in Pennsylvania Dutch to conjugating verbs, and they never get broken, okay? So learn the rules, and don't worry about, well, sometimes you got to do this. The two rules that we're about to cover will not get broken, okay? We're going to add to them eventually, but there's only, they don't get broken. So here's rule number one when you need to conjugate a verb. The first thing you need to do when you find that infinitive form, that verb, for example, zaw, the first thing you need to do, drop that E. Just take it away. What you're left with is what we call the stem. So the verb without its infinitive ending, which is an E in this case, and it always will be in Pennsylvania Dutch, what you're left with in this case, S-A-A-G, is the stem. So in, in the future, whenever I reference the word stem, I'm talking about the part of the verb without an ending. Okay? So drop the E, you're left with the stem. Rule number two, add the correct ending. So you're going to take that E away, and the next thing we have to do is we have to add something different. And we're about to talk about what those endings are. These are the rules. They don't get broken. So drop the E, add the ending, add the correct ending. Okay? What are those endings? If you remember in our personal pronouns video, we had a chart very similar to this. 
in the exact same order. And if you remember during that video, I said it is so important for you to memorize these personal pronouns in this order, okay? Here's another example why or another reason why. When we conjugate verbs, if you have those personal pronouns memorized in this order and we memorize these new endings in that order, now you're not goofing around anymore. You got it, you know it, okay? So here are the endings. Whenever you're conjugating a verb for ich, there's no ending. So you take that e away, what you're left with, the stem, you're done. You've conjugated a verb for ich. For do, drop the e, add s-c-h-t. For er, z, or s, drop the e, add a t. For near, drop the e, put it back. That's an easy one. For dear, drop the e, put a t. And for z, drop the e, put it back. Just so happens that way. No ending, S-C-H-T, T-E-T-E. As you're learning a language, I always tell my students that whatever helps you memorize things, do it. For some people, that means saying something out loud five times or X number of times to help them memorize. For some people, they actually need to get up and like walk around and say it. Uh, whatever helps you, do it. And who cares how foolish you might look doing it. But you want to memorize these and in this order because it makes things so much easier down the road. You're not constantly having to flip back and look in your notes or look at previous videos. If you memorize this chart now, it's going to help you down the road. So whatever helps you, do it. There's no right or wrong way to memorizing things because everybody's different when it comes to that. For me, I'm the kind of person sometimes I actually have to get up and walk around and say it. Or rhythm, I do something in rhythm. Or I sing it. Whatever works for you, do it. Ich, no ending. Do, S-C-H-T. Es, yes, T. Mir, E. Dear, T, Z, and C, E. Ich, no ending. Do, S, C, H, T. Es, yes, T. Mir, E. Dear, T, Z, E. Whatever helps you, do it. Memorize these in this order. So, now we know our two rules and we have our endings, okay? So let's actually utilize this and conjugate a verb. Let's go back to the verb we talked about earlier. Saw, to say. Okay? We want to conjugate saw for all of our personal pronouns in that order. So we're memorizing in that order. So if you wanted to say, I say, really simple basic sentence, but we've got to do it correctly. Rule number one, take the E away, add the correct ending. Well, we know from our chart that we just looked at that for ich there is no ending, so you would just be left with saw. Ich sag epis. I say something. Ich sag epis. For the do, take the E away, add the S C H T. Du sagst etwas. You are saying something, or you say something. Du sagst etwas. Er sie es t, er sie es, excuse me, take the e away, add a t. Er sagt etwas. Mir, take the e away, put it back. Mir saw etwas. Dir, take the e away, add a t. Dir sagt etwas. And Z, take the e away, put it back. C saw etwas. So you have now just conjugated a verb in the present tense in Pennsylvania Dutch for all six of the personal pronoun situations. Ich sag etwas, du sagst etwas, er sagt etwas, mir saw etwas, dir sagt etwas, sie saw etwas. It's so important that you learn how to do this. You have to. It's a basic rule that we have to know how to do. Okay. Now, this is where I don't want to deter anyone, but there are some exceptions, not to the rules, but there are some exceptions based on certain verbs, and that's what we want to talk about. There's three I want to point out today. Exception number one, there are going to be times where you're going to run into a verb that when you drop the E and you're left with the stem, that stem is going to end in either an S, a double S, or an SCH. It doesn't happen a lot, but it will happen from time to time. When you come across that situation, what you need to do is, before you conjugate that verb for the do form, you have to get rid of those letters and then add your ending S-C-H-T. Here's an example. The verb to eat in Pennsylvania Dutch is esse. E-S-S-E. When you drop that last E away to conjugate it, you're left with a double S. This rule tells us, or this exception of the rule tells us, we got to get rid of that double S before we add the correct ending for do which in this case we have here. So you take the E away, you're left with double S. Ah, the rule tells us get rid of those double S's, so we're left with an E. 
We add the SCHT, do eshed. The only time this happens is in the do form. So for the other five times, you don't have to worry about this. It's only the do form. Do eshed. Okay? It's not too bad. And it doesn't happen all that often. A second exception to the rule. You will also come across verbs in Pennsylvania Dutch that when you take that last E away, you might have a stem that ends in a W. When this happens, you change the W to a B throughout the singular, H do as yes, and in the dear forms. And in the example, the verb to love in Pennsylvania Dutch is liewe. When you take that E away, you're left with a W. Okay? The rule says change that to a B for these situations. And here I have conjugated liewe in Pennsylvania Dutch. For the singular, ich du as yes, the rule says change the W to a B, so it goes from a W to a B. Ich lieb, I love. Du liebst, you love. Er liebt, he loves. When we do the other three conjugation forms, remember the rule. For mir, this doesn't apply, so keep it. Mir liebe. For dir, the rule says, oh, that goes back to B, so dir liebt, and sie liebe. All right? Again, this doesn't happen all the time. Only when you come across a verb with this situation, where a W ends the stem. Okay? So there's an example. The third exception is you're also going to come across verbs now and then that end in Y-E in Pennsylvania Dutch. If this happens, you come across a verb like that, have the stem ending I-G, so the Y-E changes to an I-G throughout the singular, so only for the ich, the do, and the as yes. An example of this in Dutch, we have the verb folie, which means to follow or to obey. It ends in Y-E. The rule exception tells us, change that to an I-G for the singular forms. So when you conjugate folia for the singular forms, ich folge, du folgst, er folgt. Okay? So the, I, the Y-E goes to an I-G. In the plural forms, except dir, same way before, mir folie, dir folgt, sie folie. Okay? Again, it doesn't happen often. But you're going to come across from time to time, so I want you to know the rule. Okay. <clears throat> the thing that I need you to remember or, and take note is don't be scared by those three exceptions. Don't be like, oh my god, there's too much to remember. This, it, there is, but it's not like you're constantly going to be having to do it. You're going to constantly have to be conjugating verbs. But the chances of you running into those three exceptions are rare or on the rarer side. You're going to come across it, but it's not going to be every verb. Sometimes, all right? So, don't be scared by those exceptions, all right? Learn the rules, memorize the endings. It's easy. We already did it. Drop the E, add the ending. Those are the rules. Memorize the endings. No ending, S-C-H-T, T-E-T-E, -E. okay? It is important to conjugate verbs properly. And the reason being, some people might say, oh, come on, as long as I know the verb, a Pennsylvania Dutch speaker is going to know what I mean. Yes, we will know what you mean. If you just learned the verb esse, to eat, and you're using that, and you're not conjugating it properly, and by accident you say, ich esse, or du esse, we're going to understand what you mean. But think of it this way. If you don't conjugate properly, it's the difference between this and English from saying, I goes to the store, or he go to the store. An English speaker is going to know what this person is saying. We're going to have no problem understanding someone if they come up to you and say, I goes to the store. But, in the very same breath, most English speakers are going to say to that person, oh, you mean I go to the store. Or, he go to the store. He goes to the store. You don't want to sound like this. You want to sound correct. Okay? So, Think of it that way, all right? And just as you would correct a child who would make these mistakes, we want to correct you too. We don't want you to sound like a little kid speaking Pennsylvania Dutch. We want you to sound like someone that knows what they're doing, okay? Let's practice a little bit. So, the rule says, or the directions say, conjugate the verbs that I'm giving you in parentheses for the following sentences. So, here's a sentence. Here's a verb we, we dealt with before, runa. Do you remember what it means? We covered that in one of our earliest videos. Vuna means to live. So, as you can tell from the sentence, we want to say, I live in Philadelphia. 
I is our subject, ich. So rule number one, drop the E, add the correct ending. What was the ending for ich? Think about it, give you a couple seconds. What would we put on the blank? Ich wohn in Philadelphia. No ending for ich. Ich wohn in Philadelphia. Du is now our subject. The verb is kenne, to know a person. Die Frau, the lady. You want to say, you know the lady. Okay? Follow the rules, add the correct ending, put the right verb on the line. I'll give you a second. Du kenst die Frau. Take the EUA, add S-C-H-T. Du kenst die Frau. Okay? This time, our subject is der Karl. Well, Karl's a guy. So, when you think of your personal pronouns, what would you replace Carl with? You'd replace it with he, right? So, er, think of it that way. Our verb this time is gehe, to go. And we want to say in die Städte, in the town. So, Carl is going into town, or in the town. Conjugate the verb gehe correctly for Carl. Der Carl geht, t ending in die Städte. Der Karl geht in die Städte. Let's do some more. This time our subject is mir. We. Our verb is kommen, to come, to a party. We are coming to the party. What do we do? This is an easy one. Remember when mir is our subject, pff, not much to do here. What would it be? Mir kommen zu a party. Take the E away, but the ending for mir is another E, so put it right back. Mir kumma zu reparti. This next one, our subject is dir, you guys. Our verb this time is bringen, to bring. Eira bisha. You guys are bringing your books. That's what we want to say. So, how do we conjugate the verb bringen for dir? Think of the rules and add the correct ending. What would it be? Dir bringt, T ending, Eira bisha. And finally, Z plural, so they is our subject sound. The verb is singe, to sing, and lead, a song. We want to say, they are singing a song. Take the verb, do the rules. What are you left with? Si singe and lead. Again, that's an easy one. Si and mir, and the plurals are simple. Just keep the verb the way it is. Si singe and lead. Okay? So there, we just conjugated six verbs, six different verbs in the present tense for all six of the personal pronoun situations. All right. Now, what I would ask you to do is, if you got those dictionaries, uh, between now and the next video, practice this. And it's an easy way to practice. Take your dictionary or, on a sheet of paper, think of five verbs in English. I don't care. Anything. Five verbs. Jot them down in English. Look them up in the dictionary. Find the Dutch translation. Okay? Then, take any one of those verbs and just start making simple sentences. At this point, like, keep them simple. Just start short things like, he jumps or we sleep. First off, you're going to be building vocabulary because you're going to learn the verb for jump and the verb for sleep. And then, take that verb and, and make simple sentences. Follow the rules, add the endings, and you'll be okay. All right? Now remember, when you're looking up verbs, you might come across a verb that fits into one of those exceptions. If you do, practice that verb a little bit more than the other ones so that you get to the point where we want you eventually to get to the point with, certain, with these verbs with exceptions to start doing the exception rule without thinking about it, without having to look it up. That takes practice. You're not going to be able to do that right off the bat. But if you practice, you can hopefully get there. Okay. So that you get to a verb with a Y-E and right away you know what to do. That you don't have to look back in your notes or look back in the video and say, what do I do with a Y-E verb? You'll see it, you'll know what to do. But you're not going to get there right away. Okay? Got to practice. So that would be my suggestion between now and the next video. Build vocabulary. Look up, look up crazy verbs. Who knows? Think of a verb, look it up. And if, you can, if it just happens to not be in that dictionary, then pick another verb. Don't get frustrated. Those dictionaries that I, I uh, told you about in video number one, they have a lot of verbs in there, okay? So the chances of you looking up a verb that's not in there, I think are pretty slim.
So that's it for today. We learned how to conjugate a verb properly in the present tense for all six of the personal pronoun situations. This is something that we will be building on, and it is really a foundation of the language. You need to know how to do this. This is an important video. So if you still don't quite understand it, rewind, watch the video again. Maybe you'll pick up something you missed the first time through, and practice, practice, practice. Okay? So bis die nächste Video. Max gut und schwätzt Deutsch.